Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you some new array methods that are coming to ES 2023. And I'll also first show you how I found these array methods. So you might be wondering, you see somebody post a blog post or a tweet or a YouTube video talking about new stuff in ECMAScript. Here's how they figure out that it's new. Uh, if you go to github.com slash tc39 slash proposals, it has all of that info and more. You can actually see some of the stage zero, stage one, stage two proposals. But if you click on finish proposals, these are the things that have actually made it into the ECMAScript standard. Uh, and you can see they're grouped by, by year over here. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see the things that are now showing up in ES 2023. And ES 2023 actually has four new features. Uh, it has array find from last, hashbang grammar, symbols as weak map keys, and change array by copy. We're specifically going to be talking about array find from last and change array by copy because these are new array methods. But this table tells you exactly what is has been released in each new version of the ECMAScript standard. So first up, let's talk about array find from last. So these are two new methods introduced to arrays that allow you to search for an element or the element index by searching from the end of the array. So there's find last and find last index. So today, if you were to use the find method, let's say on this array of numbers, it'll always search from left to right. So for example, if we're trying to find the value 100, we always have to search the entire array before we get to that. And so let's actually see this in action. If I run this code here, I'm using TSX to execute some TypeScript code, but you can see that it needs to check every single value. It needs to check 42, then 13, then seven, then 82, and then finally 100 in order to find it. But if you have a specific scenario where it makes sense to search from the end, that's where find last can come into play. Same scenario, but this time if we use find last, it has to do less work because basically the first check, it's going to be able to find that specific value that we're searching for. And so now you can see down here, it only had to check the last one and it was able to find it. So find last makes a whole lot of sense if you know that the thing you're looking for is potentially closer to the end of the array. Similarly, find last index was introduced as well, and it's the same idea, but with a uh, find index instead. If we look at this find index example, it's doing exactly the same thing, except it's going to return the index instead of the value itself. Same thing here, but of course, this last one's going to run from right to left. Uh, so it's going to be able to find that index much faster because it searches from the end. So that's it for find last and find last index. Again, this makes the most sense uh, to use if you're trying to search from the end of the array, because find is always going to find the first occurrence. But if you want to find maybe the last occurrence, that's why you would use find last or find last index. You also might be wondering when and where can you use these. Uh, today, they're supported in most places. So find last is actually supported in all major web browsers. And if you look on MDN, MDN also has a list of uh, what they support, including environments like Dino and Node. So you can see uh, find last has uh, support all the way across <laughs> everything. So you can use find last today. And then similarly, find last index is, is uh, supported in, in all of the all of the same places. All right, next up is change array by copy. And I'm actually really excited about these because they're gonna be really useful uh, when you're dealing with immutable data, especially like immutable state updates in React. So this introduces four new methods. You have two reversed, two sorted, two spliced, and with. And each one of these returns a copy of the array. So let's see some examples. So for example, if I have an array one, two, three, four, five, and I wanna reverse it, the built-in reverse method on arrays actually modifies the array. And in, in some scenarios, we don't want that. So enter to reversed. So now if you use to reversed, this actually creates a copy and then reverses it. So you're not modifying the original array. So next up is to sorted. So if you were to use the built-in sort method on arrays, this actually modifies the array that you're calling it on. So for instance, if we wanna sort this array of numbers, I have my comparison function here and this sort modifies the input array. But now we have two sorted. So instead of needing to create a copy or even modifying the original, two sorted, which can take that same comparison function, now returns a copy, and now we have a sorted copy. So next up is two spliced. And the best place to demonstrate this is actually inside of a React app. So I have a super simple to do app here. You can add new items like learn array methods click enter, that actually gets added to the bottom of the list here. But on any one of these, I can click on remove, and that removes it from the list. Now, uh, if you've ever worked in React, you know that React works on immutable state. So anytime we want to update this array, we typically have to create a copy first and then remove the item. Or we do something like a filter to remove the item. But now with the two splice method, we can do it very simply. 
So in my React app, you can see that I have this state variable here for my items. And then in my render function, we're iterating over those items. And then each item has a remove button with that click handler to remove item. So if we look at remove item, we can see that it's actually accepting the index. And this function now needs to call set items to update the state. Um, using that index to determine which one needs to be removed. So you can see now with two splice, it's super simple. Uh, we're using set items. We're using the callback, which gives us the current state. And then we're taking that array and then saying, remove the element at this specific index and return a copy of the array. So now we have a nice little one liner that copies the array and removes that specific index all in one. Before two spliced exists, typically you'd have to do something like this. Like you would potentially create a copy of the array, then splice it out and then return the copy or you could use something like a filter. So you filter every item whose index doesn't match the index that you're searching for. Um, but now we can do it all in one line like this. So the next one to demo is array.prototype.with. And this actually allows us to create a copy of the array and replace a specific element in the array. So in my React app, here I have a toggle done function. And so when we click this, it actually marks the internal done property as either true or false, it toggles it. So if we look at this function, which accepts the index, uh, we can now use this with function. So we take the previous array, create a copy, and then say replace the element at this specific index with a copy of that specific item. So we still have to combine this with like the spread syntax to copy the item that we want to copy. And then we toggle the done property. But the nice thing to see here is this specific syntax. So previous now becomes a copy of the array, and then we're overwriting that specific index. Now before we had this, there's a lot of different ways that you could have done this. Uh, typically, you would often see it done with like a map. So basically, you would map over the previous uh, array that you need to copy. Every other element that's not the one that we're trying to copy, we return it. But if we found the one we want to copy, we create a copy of it by spreading it and changing the property. So you see this in a lot of React apps that aren't using some library to help with uh, managing state updates. Basically, we do a map and then replace the element itself. Um, there's also a couple of other ways we could have done this. So instead of doing like an all-in-one spread with the width, we could have done width, which actually creates a copy. And then at that point, because we've replaced the element with a copy of itself, we can directly modify it. And it's important to note that all of my examples here are using the index and that's on purpose because these methods that we're working with use the index a lot of times when you're calling these functions in your react app you may not be using the index but if you need the index you could you could use it so there's already a built-in method called find index so let's say you wanted to remove by id you could for example use find index to get the index and then call this function. But I would argue if you need to find the index anyways, you might as well use a map because then if you used find index in combination with with, that's like double iteration. But if you use a map, then it only has to iterate once. But it really comes down to how you actually implement your app. In terms of support, uh, two reversed, two sorted, two spliced, and array width are supported pretty much everywhere except for Firefox. But if you want to use those methods today, you can use CoreJS. And when you install CoreJS, you specifically can pull in uh, CoreJS stable or the specific array methods that you want to support. So here in my React app, in my main.tsx, my main entry point, I'm just importing CoreJS stable at the top. And that allows me to use those methods to spliced and with inside of Firefox. So when I'm running the app in Firefox, I can still use all those methods like toggling and removing. Uh, but you can see if I actually log out the methods, uh, it actually logs the function itself. And I can actually click on it to go to the source code. And right now I'm in development, so that's why we're seeing unminified code. Um, but in Firefox, these aren't supported, so they were polyfilled. If we look at the same thing in uh, Chromium, those methods are supported directly. So CoreJS is smart enough to not overwrite them. You can see that if I log them here, it's all native code because inside of Chromium, those methods actually exist. So it's important to keep all of that in mind if you're deciding to use one of these methods. And I forgot to mention earlier, two reverse, two sorted, and with are also supported on typed arrays. And uh, if you want to use them with TypeScript, you're going to have to wait a little bit or just add some, some custom type definitions. So there's actually a PR open right now on the TypeScript repo that adds these methods like to reversed, to sorted, to spliced. So it basically adds the type definitions so you can get editor support uh, when you're working with TypeScript. And so because this hasn't been merged into TypeScript yet, in my app over here, I actually just overrode the types. So in, in my types file here, I overrode the array type in the global namespace to give me access to these functions because I knew that I'm going to be running the code in an environment that supported them. Uh, so if you want editor support, you're going to have to do something like this until this PR is merged.
Thanks again for watching this video. If you visit coding.garden, you can get links to all my stuff. I'm actually live on Twitch right now, twitch.tv slash codinggarden. Definitely drop a follow over there and you can see all of the other places I am on the web as well. Also, I have a course right now. It's called React Roots. It teaches the basics of React and TypeScript. So definitely check out reactroots.com if you'd like to learn more. All right, I'll see you in the next one.